In today's tutorial, we are going to look at how we can find out if two objects have the same data. This is a JavaScript problem that you may need to tackle once in a while. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, I have a link in the description for becoming a patron of the channel. As you may or may not know, checking to see if two objects are the same is not as simple as checking to see if they are equal to one another. Even if the objects have the same data, they are not equal to one another unless they reference the exact same object. Let's take a look at that really quick before we look at the solution. Now here I have two objects declared, obj1, obj2, and you can see they have the exact same data in them. Now if I do a console log statement here and just check to see if they are equal to one another, like that, this is going to return false. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that. And there we have false. And the reason it returns false is because they aren't referencing the same object. Now, if we do something like this, obj3 equals obj1, basically what that does is make these two variables reference the same object. It doesn't copy the object to this variable, they just reference the same object now. So at this point, we could do obj1 equal obj3, and that will come back true, like that. Now, what if we wanted to find out if these two objects, obj1 and obj2, had the same data? We didn't want to find out if they reference the same object. We just want to see if they have the same data. Now, the function we're going to look at is going to test to see if they have exactly the same data, but it could be adjusted to check to see if it has some of the same data. That's possible as well. But we want to look at a function that is going to see if the two objects have the same data or not. So. Let's set up that function. I'm going to call it has same data obj. And I want to set this function up so that we can pass objects in and then check those objects and find out if they have the same data or not. And this function will return a true or a false. A true if they have the same data, a false if they don't. So that's what we want to accomplish in this function. Now, first thing I want to do is I'm going to set up a variable, just one variable, that contains the keys of one of these objects. We're going to compare the keys of both objects. I'm only going to use a variable for one of them because I need to repeat that. I'm going to be using that later in the function. So basically the steps we're going to take is we're going to check the keys of the objects and see if they are the same length. So first, make sure they have the same number of keys in them. That's the first check we're going to do. Then if it passes that check, we're then going to use the every function of arrays. And the reason we're using the every function of arrays is because when we gather the object keys from an object, it creates an array of those keys. So we're going to use the every function to see if every item in the object is the same as or has a corresponding item in the other object. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get into that. So first I want to gather the keys for object.1. And the way we get the keys of an object is using a static function of object, uppercase O. So object.keys, this static function will return the keys to whatever object is passed in and returns them as an array. So now obj1 keys is an array of the keys for obj1. So it'll have name, age, eyes. That's what it will have in it. 
Now we want to do a check. We're just going to do an if statement here, and we're going to check if obj1 keys and the length of that is equal to the keys array for obj2. And I didn't create a variable for this because I wasn't planning to reuse it, only had to use it once. So in this case, I'll just do object.keys obj2 like that. And so basically, we're comparing the length of two arrays. Once I put the length property here, we're comparing the length of those two arrays to see if they have the same number of keys. So that's the first check that we do. If it passes that check, well, then we'll do an additional check. If it doesn't pass that check, then we'll simply return false. If they pass this check, we'll do another check. And if it passes that check, then we'll return true. Otherwise, false will be returned. So that's how we're handling this function. All right, now what we want to do at this point is we want to use the every method of arrays. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these keys and we're going to iterate through those keys and we're going to check every single one of them and see if object two has the same property and that it's its own property and that those are equal to each other. Now, if you're not familiar with the every method of arrays, I do have a tutorial where I talk a lot about ES5 methods, one of them being every. But basically what every is, is it allows you to iterate through the elements of an array. You pass in a callback function and that callback function needs to be a predicate, meaning it needs to return either true or false. So basically what you're doing is you're checking to see if, if whatever is passed in is equal to or not equal to anyway, whether it returns true or false based upon some condition that you use in that function. And then with every, if every single one of the elements that gets passed in, pass that condition and return true, then the function itself, the every method itself will return true. Now it has a sister method as well, sum, which will return true if only some, at least one matches that criteria. So every and sum. They're usually talked about together. So we are going to obj one keys dot every. We're going to go through all of those keys. And what are we going to do with it? Well, we need to pass in a callback function that's going to indicate what we're going to do with it. So I will use an arrow function here. And if arrow functions are new, you can see some tutorials on that. I'll link to them in the description. So here's our arrow function, and here's what we want to do. We want to check obj2, and then we want to use has own property. So one thing we're getting with this tutorial is we're getting some methods of objects that maybe haven't been talked about before. But has own property, this method right here. What does this check? This checks to see if the object has the key that we passed in. See, here is the variable that accepts each key as we iterate through them. This variable will accept it. So we use that variable to check to see if object two has that as a property and that the property is on the object itself. It's not on a prototype. That's what has own property checks. It has to be on the object itself and not on a pro prototype. So we want to check that first. And then we also want to do another check. So we're going to do and obj2. And then we'll use square brackets to access the value for that key. And we want to see if that value is equal to obj1, the same key. Now, remember, this function here will return a true or false. It has to match both conditions. Is the key a part of that object? And does the value of that key equal the value of the same key in the other object? 
If so, it returns true. Then it iterates to the next key in the array and checks that. And then the next key. And it will keep doing that unless false is returned. If false is returned, then every knows that it needs to return false right away and does so. Otherwise, if every single thing passes the condition, it returns true. And so when it returns true, we want to return that true from the function itself so that we then get an indication that, yeah, those objects are the same. Otherwise, if none of that happens, we return false. So the first check is the length, making sure they have the same number of keys. And then we dive into those keys. We look at every single one of them, see if they belong on the object, and then see if the values are equal to one another. All right, so there is our function. Now let's go ahead and try this again. Let's see if these two objects are equal to one another. So we're going to call has same data obj, and we're going to pass in obj1, obj2. Let's see what we get. Just going to refresh that. There we go, we get a true. So that tells us it's true. If we add something else to this, one up here, then what do we get? We get a false. So that's working for us. That's checking to see if those are the same. Now, one thing I need to mention before we're done here, this is a shallow check. Meaning that if these objects have sub-objects, for example, if an array is included or if another object is included, it will not consider them equal to one another, even if the data is exactly the same. Let me show you an example of that. So if I do scores here, and that happens to be an array like that, and I copy this exact same thing and put it down here. And now check these. We're still getting false. And the reason that happens is the same thing we talked about in the beginning of this tutorial. Basically, an array is an object. And so even though they have the same data, they're not referencing the exact same object and therefore it doesn't doesn't pass and so if we needed to do more than a shallow check a shallow meaning there's not sub objects such as another object or an array something like that if we need to do more than that then we'd have to modify this function so that if the value is an object we then check that deeper and that's a lot more complex but that could be done. But if we need to do a shallow check, this function works great for us in determining if two objects have the same data. Now, if you wanted to check to see if an object just has some data, at least one key and value that is the same, you could replace this with the method sum, and that would work. We talked about sum a little bit. And there's some other variations you could do with this. But hopefully that shows you what's possible in checking to see if objects have similar data. All right, I hope this was helpful. If so, please hit the like button. And remember to subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. And if you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. For a certain level of support, you can get access to the code files I use in every tutorial. And you can also contribute by visiting my website. I have a link for both in the description of this tutorial. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.